So today we're going to be covering The Art of Profitability by Adrian Slowatsky, and I want to start off by saying that this is the single greatest book that has contributed to my knowledge of entrepreneurship, and it is a must-have, in my opinion, for anyone that is trying to become an entrepreneur because it teaches you so many ways to make money on your own. And because the book has 23 different ways to make profit documented inside of it, I'm just going to go over the first five today to give you guys a taste of the kind of value that this book will bring to you. Perhaps one of the most obvious ways of doing business is by utilizing customer solution profit. Customer solution profit pertains to tailoring products to meet customer needs in order to reap profits. To illustrate this, we'll use a lemonade stand cliche, however we can take this concept a little deeper. So let's imagine that it's a hot summer day and a child version of yourself decides to open up a lemonade stand to make a couple of bucks. All goes well on day one and you made enough profit to buy yourself a Snickers or something. After finding out that you could eat more chocolates if you kept opening up the lemonade stand, you successfully establish a positive feedback loop. So now let's imagine that it is midway through the week and you notice that you're not selling enough lemonade anymore. As it turns out, a kid down the block stole your idea because she too wants to eat more chocolates. So how do you regain your market share in the neighborhood? In this market there is no product differentiation and consumers will purchase based primarily on proximity to each lemonade stand. But you're a smart kid, so what you do is you go door to door and ask each kid what kind of drinks they prefer on a hot day. After piecing together your results, they show that you should sell regular lemonade, organic lemonade, and sugar-free lemonade, all with gluten-free stickers on the bowl. After doing so, it becomes a no-brainer to the neighborhood kids who they should go to for refreshments on a hot day. Ford is one of the biggest and most durable companies in American history, and as such it makes for a great example to study in any case. For this example, we are going to take a look at the product line that Ford offers for compact cars. So Ford offers six unique compact car models, all with different price points with the Fiesta as the least expensive and the Taurus as the most expensive. The starting MSRP for a brand new base trim 2015 Ford Fiesta is a comparatively super inexpensive $14,090. So as you can expect, a majority of Ford sales are made for the Fiesta model. And if you take a look at the amount of sales for each model, you will notice that the sales will form a pyramid, which is why this concept is called pyramid profit. See, Ford knows that Fiesta isn't their best product. In a lot of ways, you get what you pay for when you purchase a Fiesta. However, the Fiesta is paramount to the success of Ford as a whole because the lowest tier of the pyramid is what is called the firewall. It is called the firewall because the main objective of that tier is to prevent competitors from undercutting you. A true pyramid is a system in which the lower priced products are manufactured and sold with so much efficiency that it is virtually impossible for a competitor to steal market share by underpricing you. In contrast, let's take a look at the pyramid of one of Ford's complementary goods, gasoline. Within gasoline, there are typically three grades of fuel, excluding diesel, such as super premium, premium, and regular. If you think about what the average consumer fills their tank with, you realize why gasoline makes for an inefficient pyramid. The vast majority of consumers do not see any product differentiation between fuel grades and will always opt for the cheapest one. This creates a highly disproportionate pyramid that isolates the most expensive and often profitable products. For this next concept, let's imagine that you are thirsty for a classic cola soft drink. Where could you go to satiate your need? Well, you can get Coca-Cola just about anywhere. Corner stores, gas stations, supermarkets, children adapting to a living, breathing economy, even the vending machines at your corporate office and all at different price points. The interesting thing is, and what differentiates it from pyramid profit, is that you'll pay all of these price points over a period of time instead of just one set price point. It's the same product with infinite ways to sell it. Same product, several businesses. Whereas the pyramid markets largely different products to largely different demographics. That is why this concept is aptly named multi-component profit. For this next concept, let's place ourselves in the shoes of a talent agent who is going to Warner Brothers to try to find work for one of our agents. At the time, we only represent a handful of clients including directors, writers, actresses, and miscellaneous workers. Because we represent so few, Warner Brothers is unlikely to choose from the pool of those that we represent and thus breaks it to us softly. But what if we were to have our clients collaborate with each other to form a complete project? If we manage all of the components of the work, it makes Warner Brothers more inclined to pick our project because it is less work for them. But we can take this concept even further. What if we increased our talent pool? What if we represented a much larger client base? All of a sudden we become a big player in this market because we are more likely to represent desired content producers, and thus having more bargaining power with Warner Brothers and other studios alike. The way this interaction works, with us the agent in the center of it all and our clients operating through us, it takes on the shape of the switchboard. This is what is known as switchboard profit. 
Because I am somewhat of a computer person, for my last example I will use computer hardware manufacturers NVIDIA and AMD as my examples. NVIDIA and AMD are two top competitors in the GPU market and go neck and neck in sales every time a new product is released. And for those who don't know, GPUs are graphical processing units or the parts in your computer responsible for displaying the information on your monitors. As mentioned previously, NVIDIA and AMD go neck to neck in sales each time a new product is released. Why do you think that is? It has a lot to do with the fact that it is really difficult to patent a product in its entirety. So let's imagine that NVIDIA is on the cutting edge and is innovating faster this year. While preparing for the release of its latest GPU, NVIDIA is cognizant that it is only a matter of time before AMD and other like companies are able to copy their technology and release their own version of the product. Time. Time is the only true luxury in this world, and thus it is the cornerstone of our final concept, time profit. In the face of an impending doppelganger product, NVIDIA does the wise thing and makes the most of its allotted time by getting the word out and building hype. Prior to release, NVIDIA will be training its customer service division on the new product and have its PR division swarming social media, email, and phone lines to get the word out that they are about to release the latest and greatest GPU on the market. Upon release, in that moment, they own a monopoly. However, this is only one example in time that NVIDIA would utilize this profit model. There are a myriad of companies in the world that can and do utilize this profit model as their core means of generating revenue. So in this video, we covered the customer solution, pyramid, multi-component, switchboard, and time profit models. Again, these are only five of the 23 different profit models outlined in Adrian Slowatsky's The Art of Profitability, which I absolutely urge every aspiring entrepreneur to read.